Okay, another example. Let's say we have a Darcy type experiment. Okay. We have one reservoir here, one reservoir there. Here's the soil. Okay. And um, <clears throat> let's say that we want to calculate. the permeability, the hydraulic conductivity, right? Now, <clears throat> I'd like to use this example kind of to, to, to pose questions instead of just doing just a, just a problem, just have some questions here so we can understand better. That's the idea. We're going to do the example, but throughout the example we're going to have some questions. So, at this point, um, can you think of the, what the gradient is? What is the gradient? Well, you may say, uh, I cannot calculate it because I don't have any numbers. Okay, but I would like you to estimate it. What would you say? Well, remember the gradient is delta H over L. Delta H is the distance between the two water reservoirs, right? So, at this point, can you tell me what the gradient is? You may say, uh, I, you know, I don't have any numbers, how can I calculate it? And then I say to you, just estimate. Well, you may say something like 1.3. And in that case, I think you, I would agree. Because this distance is about 30% larger than that distance, which is L. See, that divided by that is about 1.3, 1.4. Okay, so you don't have to actually have any numbers to estimate the gradient because the gradient is the delta H divided by L, provided that this is to scale, of course. Okay, so let's say that's the case, and let's say that the Q measured is one centimeter cubed per second. Okay, what's K? Very simple. K. Well, you. In, in the test or in your mind you should write up here somewhere you should say something like this you should say Q is equal to KIA Kia, I know that and then you come back and say okay just to make sure that I have it I can do the algebra one centimeter cube per second divided by 1.3 times A okay and then how would you calculate the K then if you don't know A well I would have to give it to you okay and the A is just pi r squared where r is the radius of the cylinder okay and you would get this in centimeters per second that's what k would be now this is just a simple problem and it's very valid for tests and quizzes so make sure that you know how to do it because this is done routinely in the lab the determination of k based on the measurement of Q and knowledge of I and A. Now I would like to ask you this. <clears throat> Is K dependent on I? Is the value of K dependent on I? At this point you will say, of course. I mean, if I change this 1.3 to 7, then the K will change, right? And that's correct. I mean, if we put a 7 here and we make the calculation, we get a different K than the one we get here. But, let's think of the mechanics of what's happening, okay? Instead of just a calculation, which is agreeable to say that if you change this number, this number will change. But what happens? Let's say that we increase the gradient. Remember that we said that we increase the gradient by either lowering this, this reservoir or raising this one or both. Just increasing the delta H. What's going to happen? What do you think will happen to Q? if you increase delta H, well Q will rise right? so if L stays constant and you increase delta H what happens to the gradient? the gradient goes up right? if the gradient goes up because delta H went up then the flow rate that you measure is going to go up and as long as you are in the laminar regime a rise in I 
will lead to a rise in Q that is proportional. <coughs> okay, they are proportional to each other, these two rises. <coughs> I'm sorry. And therefore, what you will get is a constant K. The K will not change. Okay, for a given soil, of course. <coughs> so, so, if you increase the delta H and leave L constant, the I will go up. And Q will go up by the same proportion, such that this rise will cancel this rise out, and the K that you get will be a constant. Okay? Oops, sorry. So, K is not a function of I, provided that you are in the laminar regime. Okay? That is, the flow is in the laminar regime. Okay? So, make sure that you go through this example and realize that that's the case. It's a proportionality, K is, in the laminar regime, linear. Go back to the part one, first slide.